It's August 11th, 2016. We're in Rio de Janeiro for the Olympic final of the women's 100 meter freestyle. With less than 25 meters to go, this tightly contested field of eight swimmers is putting everything they have into these last few strokes with hopes of earning a medal. For some of these ladies, a medal is long overdue, and for others, it's only their first shot at winning one. In a race that often comes down to the slimmest of margins, there's no telling how these last few meters will unfold. One thing that's certain, however, is the legacies of these athletes will be affected as soon as the clock stops. To understand who these ladies are and what's on the line for them, we need to take a look back. Before we see the end of this race, let's take a quick trip through the history of swimming's oldest event. Over a century ago, at the Stockholm Olympics, women's swimming made its debut with the 100 free as the only individual event, and Fanny Durock took home the inaugural gold medal for Australia. Perhaps as a direct response to their rivals, the United States took home the next four gold medals. After swimmers from the Netherlands, Denmark, and Hungary each took home a gold medal, Australia clapped back at their home Olympics in 1956, where a young Don Fraser led an Aussie sweep of the 100 free. But that was only the beginning. She successfully defended her Olympic gold medal at the 1960 and 64 games to secure swimming's first ever three-peat. The next six games saw the Americans and East Germans alternate as gold medalists, and from the 90s to now, China and the Netherlands snagged two more golds with Australia and Germany claiming the other two. As is typically the case with sprint events, the women's 100 free has had a healthy amount of parity throughout its century-long existence at the Olympics. Here in Rio, we see that parity in full swing with six different nations represented in this final, and it's the kind of parity that's actually competitive. Unlike those other events where only a few people dominate the rest of the world, pretty much every swimmer in this final could be viewed as a contender for the gold medal. Once we understand who they are, it's easy to see why. Let's start with the two favorites. The Australian sister duo of Kate and Bronte Campbell entered the 2016 Olympics as two of the fastest swimmers in the world. Sorry the two fastest swimmers in the world. Along with those top times, each of them brought high-level international experience and accolades, though the road to Rio was anything but smooth. In 2008, Kate got her first taste of the Olympics and brought home a pair of bronze medals in the 50 and 400 free relay for Australia. Four years later at the London Olympics, her younger sister Bronte made the team, but neither of them would be bringing back any medals. They both sat outside the final of the 50 and a glandular infection kept Kate out of the 100. A year later at the World Championships, Kate won her first gold medal in the 100 free, and took home a silver medal alongside her sister in the 400 free relay. Two years later in Kazan, it was Bronte's turn to win gold in the 100, and Kate took home the bronze medal. Over the course of the last few years, Australia had a new sprint duo forming right before their eyes. The Campbell sisters routinely topped the world in the 100 free, and everyone expected them to make even more noise at the Rio Olympics. Kate, however, had other plans, and put the world on notice earlier than expected. Just over a month prior, she broke the long-standing world record in this event at the Australian Grand Prix. That's a pretty insane swim when you realize the next fastest person that year was half a second slower, and oh, look at that, it's also her sister. Fun. Jumping ahead to Rio, both Kate and Bronte made it through to the finals with ease, and everyone had their eyes set on them as the race began. The Campbell sisters got out ahead of the rest of the field pretty quickly and showed remarkable front half speed those first 25 meters. Over in lane 4, Kate opened up a pretty decent lead going into the first 50, flipping just over a tenth of a second under her own world record pace. Now at this point, you'd be foolish to call this race over, despite C1's pretty attractive lead. There are still six other gold medal caliber swimmers in this heat that have a real chance to chase down either Kate or Bronte this last lap. Among these swimmers are a few veterans who have been in this situation before and are long overdue for a gold medal moment of their own. About 14,000 kilometers away from Australia's 1-2 punch of a sprint duo, three different European nations each had their own superstar primed to make some noise in Rio. You have the defending Olympic gold medalist in Renomi Chroma Wujojo, a former world champion in Jeanette Otteson, and a newly crowned Olympic gold medalist in Sarah Schoestrom. Like Kate and Bronte, these ladies had their own roads to Rio that often intertwined with each other. Since 2009, pretty much every major international meet featured at least two of them competing in the 100 free, and their frequent meetings made for some pretty fast races. 
All of them had the makings of some of the most established sprinters of their generation and had the accolades to back it up. But how realistic are their gold medal chances in Rio against a powerhouse like the Campbell sisters? Of all the swimmers here, Chroma with Jojo is the only one who knows what it's like to win gold in this event. Four years ago in London, she obliterated the rest of the field in a new Olympic record time, so she can certainly hold her own against the world's top sprinters. Sarah Scheustrom is better known for her success in butterfly events, but over the years she's proven her worth in the 100 free as well. A few months prior to this, she actually beat Chroma with Jojo for the European title and entered the Rio Olympics as the third fastest performer in the world. Then there's Jeanette Ottesen, the Olympic journey woman for Denmark. While she hasn't replicated her world championship success from 2011, she's not to be dismissed as a contender. She's been in this very final twice before, and that experience is sure to be of use in Rio. While she's outside the top 10 worldwide, she's only gotten faster and put herself in good position to potentially win gold. After a tightly contested prelim and semi-final session, all three of them made it to the final alongside the two favorites. Kate and Bronte opened up that first 50 really fast, leaving our other contenders in a tough spot. They've got a lot of work to do to get back in this race, but they're certainly up for the task as we can see them start to close in on the Campbells. Shoystrom in particular looks like she's got a good chance, but not as good a chance as these other ladies we haven't talked about yet. Every race has its favorites and contenders, but there's always those few rookies in the mix looking to make some noise, and the three we have in this field are starting to make their move to potentially pull the upset. While Australia and Europe have produced the more refined and experienced class of sprinters in this final, North America has sent multiple first-timers to Rio to compete in this event, but they're not entirely new to the international scene. For the United States, Simone Manuel and Abby Weitzel had already won world titles in the 400 free relay and even shared the pool to capture a pan pack title, though neither of them had achieved that same success individually at a senior level meet. For Canada, teenager Penny Alexiak burst onto the scene at the 2015 Junior World Championships where she took home six medals including a relay win. This was also mere weeks after she suffered an elbow fracture, so she certainly won tough cookie. All three ladies had their sights set at the Rio Olympics and made their national teams in the 100 free, though they weren't viewed as legit contenders. Kate and Bronte's sprint freestyle was on a completely different level, and these rookies got their first taste of that before this final took place. On the first night of finals, the Australian women put together a world record breaking performance to claim the gold medal in the 400 free relay with Kate and Bronte swimming the last two legs. The United States took silver and Canada took bronze. As great as these splits were for everyone else, it became pretty apparent that the Campbell sisters were on their way to a potential 1-2 finish in the 100 free just a few days later. The prelims and semifinals came and went with all three of our rookies advancing to face arguably some of the greatest sprinters the sport has ever seen. After an insanely fast first 50 from the Australians, a line of about 5 swimmers starts to take form and the race suddenly turns into a shootout. That brings us here just shy of 15 meters from the end of the race. Kate and Bronte Campbell hold a slight edge on the rest of the field, but the surrounding swimmers are running on fumes trying to hunt them down. These ladies have met each other in countless hundred free finals in years past, and nearly every time it went the way of the Australians. Now at the Olympics, it looks like that streak may finally be snapped. Will Kate and Bronte top the world yet again in swimming's oldest event? Can any of our veterans mount a late surge to claim their long overdue gold medal? Or do any of our rookies rise to the occasion and become immortalized against their peers? Only one way to find out. Welcome to a moment in history. Hey, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, don't forget to give this video a like, and while you're down there, consider subscribing for more content like this. If you enjoyed this look back, I've got a whole playlist of other races I've looked back at. If you'd like to watch some current day swimming, check out this video right over here. Until next time, good night, and good swim bro.